The Accord has been the staple luxury Honda since its concession in 1976. Comfortable, feature-rich and relatively affordable, this was the go-to car for any middle-class businessman looking for a stylish Japanese saloon demonstrating performance, reliability and an uncanny ability to let everyone know you couldn't afford a BMW. So, as a middle-class businessman myself that couldn't afford a BMW, this was the obvious choice. Say hello to the new Kiwi Car Life car, Earl the Accord. Styling-wise, this 2009 Accord Euro is restrained but purposeful. The angular front xenon headlights give a nice aggressive appearance, and the attractive rear end is complemented by twin exhausts. The proportions of the car certainly make it seem larger than it is, because once you get inside, you realise the cabin space isn't actually as big as you think. But overall, the appearance of even this non-sport model is very elegant. The engine is a K24Z3, 2,354cc 4-cylinder dual overhead cam IV tech motor. It produces 230Nm of torque and 198 horsepower, revving to 7,100rpm. It's mated to a very smooth 5-speed automatic transmission with pedal shifters, and if you'd like to know what the pedal shifters do, I have another video for that, which will be linked in the description. Even though a rear-wheel drive Accord would have been awesome, every Accord has been front-wheel drive and this Euro model is no exception. However, ride comfort and handling are excellent thanks to supple yet firm double wishbone suspension front and rear. This car comes from the factory with 17-inch 225mm wide tyres which produce little road noise and grip very nicely. The interior is all very typical Honda. Everything is well laid out, easy to use and feels solidly put together. This L model comes equipped with some comfortable yet aggressively bolstered and heated leather seats, along with some nice leather trim on the door cards and centre armrests front and rear. This makes sitting in any of the main four seats supremely comfortable, with the middle seat at the back being the only exception. The 6 CD auto changer was top notch for its day, but now the only useful feature is the radio and aux input. However, an FM transmitter brings it into 2019 very easily and can be powered out of sight from inside the centre console. The climate control is automatic and dual zone and also has a couple of air vents in the back to give your rear passengers some airflow. There are several nice storage spaces about the cabin and the boot space is very generous. The gauge cluster is uncluttered and attractive, especially at night with the small display and the speedometer showing lots of useful trip information and notifications like low fuel, door open, or even speed alarms, and it can all be controlled from the steering wheel. The steering wheel also features cruise control, buttons to control the stereo, and pedal shifters. Finally, it has automatic windscreen wipers, automatic headlights and fog lights, automatic up and down windows, and two memory seat functions. So there we are, that's an overview of my new to me 2009 Honda Accord Euro L. Now let's take it for a drive. Alrighty ho, driving the Accord. And the first thing that you'll notice is that it is just incredibly quiet and comfortable in here. It's so easy to have conversations with people. The stereo system sounds really good. It's got a good amount of bass. It's like a really awesome road trip car. You can fit everybody's stuff in the back. Everyone's comfortable. I can just chuck my heated seat on. The fuel economy in the city is pretty awful. Uh, I've been doing mostly city driving and I've been getting 11.5 litres per 100k and that's with like really cruisy driving but uh, it's worth it when you get out on the open road. The uh, gearbox is actually very responsive. Um, the one in the Jazz uh, has basically this, the, the paddle shift is working exactly the same way um, but in this one they just seem to be a lot more responsive. You know you, you pull the paddle and there's not really any weight around it just kind of does it right when you want it to just holds the road nicely and there's good bolstering on the seats too so I'm not I'm not moving around at all in my seat I'm held it right in place and so I can just cruise through these corners down into second you don't even know that it's changed down now the ratios are extremely long to uh, make it nice for traveling on the open road with um, and so as a result it can feel a little bit sluggish when you put your foot down because it takes quite a while for the webs to build up because the gears are so long but I mean this is a pretty much a 200 horsepower car so uh, it certainly doesn't go too bad I'll give you a little bit of an idea of how the performance goes here traction control off here we go so able to spin the wheels on the launch so yeah it's certainly got enough power uh, to get you going mighty quick but yeah it's oh man 
mad that even surprised me a bit. When it once it gets above about four and a half thousand RPM, that you feel just this power just surging. Because I mean, it's not surprising, eh? Like I was saying, because it's a big, heavy car and with such long gears, you know, down low, I'm flooring it now, and it feels a little bit, you know, sluggish. But once you get it up to a little bit more speed, there we go, we've got a bit of straight there. Yeah, you can really feel a torque. Though I'm not going any faster than that. I need to be very careful here. But you know, even hitting all the cat size and stuff, like there's not really any rattles or anything. This car. You know, for an 11 year old car, it is really um, held up very, very nicely. Um, it's still lovely to drive, there's still hardly any rattles. There's the automatic windscreen wipers that have detected that it started raining and they just come on all by themselves. And on the brakes. Look at that. Pouring with rain. <laughs> and that, I'll be honest, that actually stopped quicker than I even expected. That was like properly. That really laid on the anchors there. So there we are. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea of uh, what it's like to drive this lovely 2009 Cord Euro that I've bought for myself. I've got a few things planned for this. I don't intend to make it go any faster. I'm quite happy with the way it drives at the moment. However, the upgrades that I've got planned will only be cosmetic and they won't be like Ricer, stupid cosmetic things like underglow and LED lights and pointless things like that. You know, I do actually plan to do some nice, simple OEM looking cosmetic upgrades to this thing. Um, but power wise, I think I just want to leave it stock um, because anything that I do to it will encourage me to drive it faster and that's not what I need at the moment. Um, make sure to go and check out some of my other videos and uh, hang around to uh, see what I plan to do with this thing and I will see you guys next Sunday 9pm see you then